Right, hi lads and lasses, and welcome to Darts Coaching with Dynamite Dave. This is the second video in the introduction to darts. Yeah, I think I'll start with that one. So, we lads and lasses, start with that one. talk about today is probably the most interesting bit which is the actual throw to be able to throw those board darts to the board in a relatively short time scale and actually being able to get those darts to relatively go where you want them to go like I say it'll make it so as you're not so disheartened with the game and it'll just it'll make your love for darts flourish it really will even the seasoned campaigners if you're prepared to give it a bit of a go there's many now that in these down times while we've had this, this corona thing and also a lot of the lads before that happened what they'd do is when they had the break at the end of the season they'd convert from the way that they're throwing darts now into the Dynamite Dave way so when they got back into the season the, the first season back they were throwing better than they'd ever thrown before right so let's go over onto that first section and the first section today is going to be a little bit different because I've had a couple of questions on yesterday's video so what we're going to do is we're going to go and address those couple of questions right now so let's go over and have a look at that right now the first little question is from Andrew Mercer and Andrew Mercer said what are those chocks that you're using behind the board that are soft and stop the sound well they don't stop the sound altogether because nothing ever will but they do dampen it quite a lot and what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at one of them right now so let's whip this off see how easy these come off brilliant piece of kit Right, that's how easy that comes off and what I'll do is I'll just take one out for you there you go and these were bought from Wilkinson's so Wilco's and I think they were £2.50 something like that and you get three in the pack so and as you can see they're dead squashy and they're dead soft they're like um, a foamy type rubber so there you go that's what they look like all they are is basically just a door chock what I was saying about the blade um, boards is underneath here, you won't be able to see it from there but I can feel it, they actually have plastic legs on them that wind in and out. So if it's going on a solid wall, you can always, there's a couple of ways you can do this, there's little felt pads, so there's another little bit of a tip this one, there's little felt pads that you can buy from Pound Shop and you get about probably 20 or 30 on a card. So what I tend to do with these, if I'm putting it on a solid wall, is I'll screw these right back to the board, stick a felt pad on it, so as it's, so as it's got that little bit of cushioning on it, then screw it back out till it touches the wall and then make the board nice and firm. Because, if, as you can hear, this is an inside wall and if I do that you can even hear the door rattling. In these houses that were built in the 1930s as this one was, um, the inside walls are just a stud wall, it's just a stud wall with a couple of bits of plasterboard nailed to it, plastered over and then obviously um, painted, and as you can see a bit of wallpaper on it. So I won't say flimsy but they're a bit hollow and they're a bit, they make a lot of noise. So like I say these little things make a massive difference if you're going on a solid wall and you're going to have a Blade 5 dual core or the normal one whichever this one is, I do believe at certain points, now this is only really if you want the cheapest of the cheap options because I can't recommend it myself because I've had that many people complain about them but Argos do do these type of boards I think they do 
the windmill one and I think they do um, a, a unicorn one as well but they're done to a price they're really cheap I think this one at the moment in Argos you can probably pick them up for about 30 quid 28 30 quid which is pennies for a dartboard it really is for a good dartboard won't last as long as one that you buy from darts corner or somewhere like that because they are actually made to a price the sizzle isn't um, so you don't get the same density of bristling you don't get the same um, healing quality etc again a bit complicated if you're brand new to darts but what we're doing is answering people's questions at the moment we're going to go on to the simple stuff straight after this so that just goes in there like that and all you do is just push it up like that until your board is nice and solid always try and make sure that you get your board level so it's not right in towards the wall at the top and right out at the bottom or to, to the sides or anything get it nice and level just makes it a lot nicer to play on all right so let's pop that back on there where it came from let's get it nice and level as you can see i've got my atomic darts uh, stickers on there which will give matt harper the idea that I've got the darts and everything now, absolutely fantastic and I'm going to make a, a video of the Atomic Darts. Now Matt Harper, who runs Atomic Darts, fantastic TV show and everything. If you're not actually on his channel, type it into YouTube, Atomic Darts, get over there, get subscribed to him. Start watching some of his videos because this uh, coffee and darts thing that he does is really, really good and I've appeared on it now. And found it really good, really entertaining. And Matt... Uh, is a representative for shot darts and matt and shot darts have collaborated between each other and shot have made matt some of his own his very own design of darts so matt has sent me a set of those his own personal ones so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a review on those over the next um, week or so right so moving on to the second point a chap called iRacer so he's asked me which what the light is that's above here now these, when they first came out, were only available, right, I'll turn this round to here so you can actually see the strip light. It's a 180 and it's called an Illumina. Now they're not cheap like these, lights these for a very, very simple reason. Right, so I'll put it at the front there. Let me zoom you into the board. Right, if I get a dart and push, push the dart in there, as you can see, there's no shadows. Now what a fantastic piece of kit this light is. Like I say, it's not cheap. You're looking at 60 or 70 quid for this light, possibly up to 100 depending on where you get it from. For the first three months they were only available from BVD darts. So as you can see, BVD darts here, down the bottom here. Yeah, let's just get that in there so you can see what the, the actual website is. So that's Brian Van Doren, BVD darts. He sells these Illumina lights and uh, I'll tell you something, I've never come across anything like it because... The halo lights are alright, but they only light up the board. Whereas this one, as you can see, if you've got a, a scorer at the side of it, a chalkboard or something, it lights it all up. It's really good if you're like a semi-professional outfit where you've got a referee that stood at the side of the board, it illuminates for him as well. Whereas with the halos, if you've got a ref stood at the side of the board, the halo itself actually impedes his vision of the board. So these are absolutely fantastic, like I say, no shadows or nothing. I don't know how they've made them, they've done something fancy with this light section up here. It's LEDs and they've got them set in a certain way that they don't project anything, any shadows. Absolutely fantastic. Right, so hopefully that answers Mr Mercer's question. So let's go over into the main body of the video. So let's get on with that and go over there right now. Right, so here we are in the main section of the video. Probably you could call it section two, couldn't you? Because section one was the answer in the, uh, the questions, and now we're off into section two. And section two is all about the introduction to darts and how to get those darts to go towards that board relatively the way that you want them to. Now, the Dynamite Dave way, especially if you're starting right from the beginning, but it doesn't matter if you're a seasoned, normal player, anything, Super League player, professional player, it doesn't matter. This system works for anybody and everybody, if they're prepared to put the dedication in. If you do all this helicopter throwing and what have you now, and you're not prepared to change that, that's absolutely fantastic. If you like watching the videos and you're entertained by them, that's great. But this is a way of getting people into a lovely, simplistic, uh, very relaxing, very nice, very easy way of throwing darts. And if you start this right from the beginning, which I'm hoping there's a few new newbies out there, 
you'll find this makes a massive difference to you. And the other thing is, don't forget, if you're watching this video, like, subscribe and hit the notification bells and you'll be getting all the videos that follow this because we're going to go on to structured practice, the mental side of the game, we're going to be doing all sorts over the next few months. We've got loads and loads of content for 2021 and we're going to be doing some collaborations with other YouTube channels as well. Right, so let's get on with it, shall we? So what we're going to do now is, first of all, is we're going to have a look at the darts themselves. We talked yesterday about the brass darts that you get with one of these setups. If you've done that, as soon as you can afford to, buy yourself a set of tungsten darts. What you're looking for, shape-wise and weight-wise, is to start off with, if you've never played before, I would recommend personally you go from anything for between 22 and 24 grams. 26, 27s are you getting on your heavy side, 18s, 19s, 20s are like the light side. So the best way you can ever start anything is in the, in the middle and what they call a median position. So we'll always start from the middle. So basic set of darts, tungsten darts, and believe me, you can pick them up all day long for between 15 and 20 quid. You can get some that are just above a tenner. So if you're prepared to have some like no make darts, which doesn't matter because they all throw the same, as long as the weight matches matched and what have you, and the guaranteed weight matched, make sure you make make sure you find out about that when you're buying the darts that the match weight between I'd say 0.5 and 0.1 of a gram. If the weight matched, then you're absolutely laughing. Best thing you can go for to start off with is either a straight barrel or an elongated rugby ball. And we'll have a look at those right now. Right, now, that is a straight barreled tungsten dart. That is a BVD Steady. So that's a, a very basic dart with quite a decent grip on it. There's actually quite a distant, decent distance between those cuts which will give you quite a decent level of grip. So that is a straight barrel with a standard ring grip. You can then go on to what I call an elongated stretched out rugby ball, whichever way you want to call it. Now these are some quite old darts but it just gives you the idea of the shape. And that is what I call the elongated rugby ball. So it starts off thin, goes thicker in the middle, thinner towards the other end. These I personally find a better dart because they go in to your fingers better because as you, if you hold your dart it's, it's thin at the back, you've got the hump in your finger that comes out and then your finger naturally goes down towards the other end. Straight barrel is just as good, all, all depends on yourself. But just, get, just to get yourself going, a nice cheap of between 10 and 20 pound set of darts, absolutely acceptable and we'll, you can play with them for the rest of your life if you, if you pick yourself a good set that work for you. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're just going to use a standard set of darts. So I'm going on to now a straight barrel set, which I've used for a long, long time, on and off. And those are the Windmow High Impact 2s. You can buy these from Argos and they're not cheap, not dear, 35 quid. They are £35, £34 something I think they are now. Started off at 28 and they're 95% tungsten these, so they are a really good weight matched and a good throwing set of darts. Probably 95% is about as good as it gets, I think. But right, right, so here we are, we've got our Oki line, which we explained a little bit about yesterday. So this is the Oki, we've got ourselves our Oki down and everything. Don't matter whether it's a little bit of a line on the floor, a bit of I don't know, insulation tape, masking tape, whatever you can start off with as long as you're standing at the right place. First thing to start off with is to say, make sure that you get yourself into the right position every time. So you need to be stood in the same place. Don't stand here and then next visit stand here and then stand here and then stand here and then stand over here and over here. It's no good, you need to be in exactly the same place when you're scoring you need to be in exactly the same place every time. Dead simple and um, effective way getting yourself onto the hockey. First of all, it's dead simple. All you're doing is you're just standing with your feet shoulder width apart and don't forget shoulder width is your feet underneath your armpits, not out to the sides. So directly underneath your armpits, just standing nice and straight and then all we do is we convert that to here. What we do with this front foot as you can see, I'll tip it over, is it goes not like this to start off with, but like this. It makes it a lot more comfortable when you're not used to standing side on. So all we do is turn that foot very slightly in, 
again, as I say, feet nice and straight, shoulder width apart, and that's as simple as that. That's your, that is what connects you to the floor. You don't lean forward and start doing this with your feet over here because, as you can see, once you do that, you're unstable. It's like standing on one leg. And stability is a key part to actually getting your darts to where you want them to go. Right, so now we're coming up to the upper half of the body, or what we call the upper torso. What we're doing is getting ourselves onto the hockey the same way as what we just did before. And what we're doing is standing bang side onto the board. So we're standing at 90 degrees to start off with. When we stand at 90 degrees to start off with, we turn our head over our left or right shoulder. If you're right handed, it's your right shoulder. If you're left handed, it's your left shoulder. So all you're doing is if you were driving your car and you were just looking out the window, that's all you're doing is just moving your head towards the board, looking directly at the bullseye. Then what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're stood up straight. No slouching forward and no giving it this. Try to get your, your, your thing or your face behind the dart. None of that is just standing straight upright. And all we do is we just turn our head towards the board and we fetch our arm up. Now this upper part of your heart, your arm here, I'll turn around to show you, this upper part of your arm here must remain horizontal. Obviously when you throw the dart, your elbow will lift like that, but that's irrelevant because you've let go, you've let go of the dart by then, so it doesn't have any effect on where your dart goes. If you're down here and you're pushing upwards, as you're letting go of the dart, you're forcing the dart up in the air, and that means that you're putting your shoulder and all sorts of other things into the throw, which means it makes it more and more complicated, and that is the last thing you want to do. So, we're standing here, elbow, to shoulder, nice and level, forearm vertical. So if we're standing like that, we'll look that way, and we do that, as you can see, my arm is in front of my face. Now, that is not what you want. You do not want to be looking at your arm instead of the board with one of your eyes. So all you do is you allow your whole, the whole top of your body to rotate very slightly to there. And now you can see all of my face. Arm is still absolutely straight. When I'm looking now, it's straight down the middle, but my hand isn't in front of my face, so I'm not affecting my vision. So it's from the side of your face here, and you can rotate a little bit more. If you're catching your glasses, you can just rotate a tiny little bit more, and it just takes getting used to that body position. But once you have, even if you're a seasoned player, that will make a massive difference to the way that you throw your darts, because you've got vision from both eyes, and it makes it so as you've got a nice long throw. The problem that you've got is if you come from in front of your face, you've got this as a throw. If you come from the side of your face, look at the difference in that from there to there. That is your throw without poking yourself in the face with your dart. That is the amount of, of actual throw that you've got. If you come to the side of your face, the, the, arm can, the arm can come right back to where it actually meets the muscle. And you can get a lovely bounce off that as well. For when you throw in and it really does help your accuracy so again we're up and we're just getting that feeling now without any darts in our hands so it's like an okay sign and all you're doing is just plopping the darts in the board with your mind now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to actually picking some darts up and throwing some darts so we're going to split screen it put the board up here so you can actually not only see what i'm doing but see the effect that it has on the actual darts Right, so what we'll do now is we'll just get ourselves set up, as I've just told you, nice and simple. Now then, if you've not been playing darts for long and you've just come in and you've just started doing it and you're holding the darts really funny, this is what I consider, and it's only what I consider to be the correct way to hold them. And that is what they call, what I call the three-fingered grip or three points of contact. You've got your top finger that sits on top of the dart, You've got your thumb that comes up nice and straight, so it's not bent like this or anything, you're just holding the dart nice and straight, and then you've got this finger, and it's entirely up to yourself. I put the dart underneath my nail. If you haven't got a nail to put it under, all you do is just rest the dart on top of your finger, between your finger and your nail, so between the skin and the nail, just so as the dart rests on there. And that will give you the ideal throwing position. You start off... This back, tiny back part of the finger just about touches the end of the dart and that gives you a nice central position on the point as you can see. And that for me 
is the ultimate uh, way of gripping a dart. Now if you've not been around the channel for long, you probably won't know this, but I spent two and a half years developing the Dynamite Dave way. Then started the YouTube channel, and the YouTube channel has been going on over four years now, so we're looking at six and a half to seven years worth of development. And it does work, there's seven and a half years worth of history behind it, and many things have changed in the game, even on TV. My fans will tell you, even stuff on TV has changed from the thing of the teachings that I did years and years ago about double double finishes. If you're watching the World Championships now, and you watched it last night with Dave Chisnell and what have you, Chizzy's double double finishing, Anderson's double double finishing, virtually all the top stars now, Dirk Van Diven Bone, he's double double finishing, they're all doing it. You go back in the archives of the videos and you try and find any, you might find one or two that did double double finishes before that, but it'll be on one or two occasions. Now it's virtually every match. Right, so what I'm doing does actually work and the stuff that I teach people does work and that's the proof of it. So we're standing nice and straight, upright, feet underneath the armpits, no lifting the back leg up, no leaning towards the board. All you do is you stood up straight and all you do is just rock your weight onto your front foot. That is it, no more. Just rock your weight onto your front foot and that will cause your hip, your front hip to pop out. When you feel it, you'll feel your front hip, and if you run your hand down your side, it'll be absolutely level all the way down, and that means that your hip is locked out. Right, so we lock the hip out, arm comes up, so it's nice and level, and it's just that nice tick-tock motion. And that's all you want to do. First visits to the board is just a matter of just trying to throw towards the bullseye, the middle of the board, and that will give you an idea of how your grouping is coming on. And this whole game is about grouping. And it's as simple as that. Now that, that sort of grouping is perfectly acceptable after a week or so. So if you're getting to that sort of level after a week or two weeks of doing it, not straight away, not the first day, please, whatever you do, don't expect this to happen overnight. Because it won't. Nothing in life works. Nothing in life that's good happens overnight or is easy. You have to put some effort and some dedication into it. But if you do, I absolutely guarantee you, you'll become a really, really good dart player in quite a short period of time. Right, so again, get yourself into the position. Make sure you're right with your foot on the hockey correctly and everything. Making sure that you're little toe is on line with the centre of the hockey. Stick yourself a little sticker in the middle of the hockey so it's right in the centre of the bullseye so you know where you are every time. If you want to you can even put an opposing little sticker on your shoe. If you have a set of shoes that you're just going to throw darts in, oh, it doesn't really matter. If you just put a little mark on your shoe with a sharpie, nobody would ever know that it was there. But it just makes it so as you're getting in the same place every time because it's absolutely imperative that you're stood in the same place every time you come to the board. To, to set yourself up. Second two arrows there, absolutely no effort. Just dead relaxed and just throwing, just plopping them darts where you want them to go, just putting them in with your mind. Look at your target, just put the darts where your target is. Right, and when it comes to moving your darts round, which is down the road a little bit, you've got to get your grouping first. So your first few practice sessions, your first week or so, you're more or less concentrating in your practicing to get in those darts grouped. Once you have, and you want to start moving them round, it's simplicity again itself. It's the stance, and all you're doing is just the hips. And all you do is, you the way that you look at the bullseye when you're throwing, like you're putting the dart in the bullseye, all you do is everything comes down to the 19 and you just put in the dart in the 19. The arm speed, everything stays relatively the same. There's many, tiny little differences in it, but you won't even notice it. It'll just become natural. You won't find any effort into it. You might do the first day or so when you're doing it, but after that, you'll just know. It's like me when I'm coming down for the 19s. I don't have to manoeuvre down. My body automatically sets where it needs to be and boom, they're straight in. So... Just to give you a bit of a demonstration, I know it's a bit ahead of time, but 
this is how you adjust it. So if you're aiming for say the bullseye or the 20, so that's the 20, I'm coming up with the hips, that's the 20 where I would normally set myself up. Down a little bit, that's the bullseye. Down a bit again, and that is the, tw the 19s. So it's in, and just a matter of again, exactly the same, just plopping those darts in. So again, just setting yourself up for the 19s. So all you're doing is you're coming up, and if you want to, you can set up for the treble 20 or the bullseye and then fetch yourself down. Eventually, all you'll do is exactly what I do, which is that. Because I know exactly where I'm going right from, right from the goal. Ah, not fantastic, not in the treble, but all grouped there or thereabouts. There you go, 171. And that, as I'm just talking to you, is exactly where you'll end up. So, that is today's little thing about getting that right. So you've got the you've got the stance and you've got the mechanical throw. What we're going to go into tomorrow or in the next video, it might be tomorrow, it might be a couple of days, because we're back in work tomorrow. But over the next couple of days, the next video is going to be about practice. So basically, once you've got that grouping correct, once you've got the actual throw. Ma not mastered, but once you've got used to it, then you can actually go on to start doing a little bit of competitive throwing darts. So, thanks very much for watching this short video. Hopefully it's helped you, hopefully it's encouraged you on a little bit. And like I say, where you, where you are now, that is where you're going to get to. And it's not once that I've done this. If you watch the, the leader into this video, you'll see 180 after 180 after 180, 140s, big finishes. Right, so thanks for watching Darts Coaching with Dynamite Dave. I hope you've enjoyed this video, you found it entertaining and informative. If you have, don't forget, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And do me a massive favour, if you can, have a go on the Dynamite Dave raffle. It's what keeps all this going. Right, so thanks for watching. Don't forget, lads and lasses, as it says on the shirt, you'll only ever get out of this game what you're prepared to put in. And that is the truth, that. You'll only ever get out what you're prepared to put in. And always, 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 talk to the hockey!